an inside ring at the DMV, stealing customer information, forging documents, and making money. Tonight, CBS 58 Investigates is getting answers from the DOT about what happened and if your information could be at risk. The scheme we found involves DMV employees forging applications for car titles using customers' personal information. We dug into who's behind it and why the problem isn't solved. Jill Nunn traded in an old car in 2017 and didn't give it another thought until months later when she got a call from the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. They asked me if I had applied for a new title for the vehicle. And I said, not since I had traded it in. Investigators sent her a copy of the title application. It had her driver's license number, address, and was signed at the bottom. Once I saw my name with someone else's writing, that's probably when I got mad. Through multiple open records requests, CBS 58 Investigates learned the problem is much bigger than just Nunn's case. A ring of DMV employees, primarily at the Milwaukee Northeast DMV, accessed customer records and used the information to get titles. The crimes date back to at least 2014. The victims all traded their cars into dealerships, which then sold them at auctions. Whoever bought the cars at auction is behind the scheme and used those insiders at the DMV. And I asked him, I said, well, I don't get it. I don't understand what is the, the benefit to someone by breaking the law. The answer is money. In Wisconsin, cars purchased at auction must then be sold to licensed dealers. But the forged titles made it look like the cars were privately owned. According to the DOT investigation, that allowed the suspects to sell directly to a customer instead of selling to a dealer at a lower price. Four DMV workers were fired and charged. Lisa Lorenzo and Pippa Benning pleaded guilty to several felonies. I believe we're ready for trial. Two others, Isaac Awi and Clarice Adams, are set for trial later this year. I sold my car in 2015. Willie McNary is set to testify at Adams' trial. She says she got a call from investigators two and a half years after trading in her car and immediately worried that her personal information is now compromised. I suddenly got upset. I got scared and nervous and I was like, okay, so what's happening? 58 Investigates asked the DOT how this could happen. They refused to go on camera, but in a brief statement said in part, all the customers affected were notified and the DOT claims customers are not at risk for identity theft. But the DOT did not say if they caught everyone involved, and records we got show investigators still don't know who's behind the scheme. Those fired DMV employees claim they only know nicknames. I was completely shocked. I had no information about this. Senator Lena Taylor, who represents the area where this happened, says it's concerning not only because personal data was compromised, but because if a car is involved in a crime, it's important to know who actually owns it. And more importantly, this is, you know, very much a public safety issue. After talking to 58 Investigates, Senator Taylor says she reached out to the DOT secretary for more information and to see if there's new legislation that can prevent this in the future. Looking at the licensing process for individuals who are able to go to auctions. Senator Taylor says she doesn't think the investigation into what happened or who was involved is over, and neither do the victims. Do you feel like you got enough answers about what happened? Not really, not yet. I'm working on it. According to the documents we got, it looks like investigators believe the DMV workers did this for bribes, though the suspects deny that. Meanwhile, Isaac Awi goes to trial in March, Clarice Adams in April. Reporting in studio, Kristen Barbarisi, CBS 58 News.